of them don't come back. So you have to literally dig and find how those family members disappeared and try to bring them back. And that's what this is all about. Um, two, year before last, no, last year, I was um, headed up the, a reunion called the Calling All Branches. And what that reunion did was took all of those names that you see right there and brought them together. And we have a page, and I'm hoping if any of you are on Facebook, get on that page because we're all family that's in here. Everybody in here, one way or another, we are all connected to each other. It doesn't matter. And I think as much as if we can get more of this information out there, I really believe that it will bring a lot of us together. So that's my overall, that's my reasoning for writing the book. So now my question to you guys is if you have any questions about the book. Like what did you like? What were your dislikes or things like that? Those who have already read it. Um, if you have any, anything you want to talk about within it. Did you have a favorite story that was in it? Anything like that? So, anybody? Just have one question. Yes, ma'am. What's, what's Moses' last name? Moses? Moses' last name is Williams. Williams. Okay. He took on the slave land, um, the name of John Williams. John Williams was um, the patriot. He was considered as an American patriot. As a matter of fact, it's stuff like this that will get you into organizations like the Doors of the American Revolution. If you don't think you've ever been able to get into stuff like that, now you can because we have those lines. We have those connections on how to do that. Um, and that's another way to break racial issues. You know, to join those types of organizations, and I know I'm kind of calling Kevin Black because I haven't done it yet, but I can. And, um, but, you know, you can join those types of organizations so it can better explain to you who you are as a person, and it'll also share the information with others. And how many children do you have? Huh? How many children do you have? I have four. My daughter is 24. No, I'm sorry. Moses. Moses. Oh, 45. Did you have? Moses had 45 children. 40 girls, 5 boys. Oh, okay. 40 girls, 5 boys. And um, I'm working with five other researchers who Sheila Hightower Allen is one of them, and we have found 10 so far. We found all five boys and we found five girls. Now his children were born during slavery time, so it's very difficult to find his kids. Um, Moses was born 1769. And I, I found him by accident. Basically, I thought I found his son, Moses Jr., who was born 1791. Moses Jr. is, the, is my three-time great-grandfather. He is the father to my two times great grandmother, Jane Williams, who married a senior. And that's where my line comes in at. And I was going through an a, a, a online site called newspapers.com. And newspapers.com basically, um, this just, it's archived newspapers way back, dating back into some of them for 1700s. Some of them come all the way up to today. Some of them stop in 1930. It all depends, but it's a huge, it's, it's awesome. It's a good place to do the research. And I happened to be going through there for something, and I saw the name Moses Williams, and that he looked a 50, but he was actually 60, in his 60s, and he had 45 children who were living. So that kind of threw me off, and I'm like, okay, I'm, that's fine. I'm not looking this up. <laughs> and I told my cousin Brian, who was the one that spearheaded the whole, who spearheads the whole Moses Williams research thing, and because um, I was not going to do it. He literally had to talk me into doing that. But um, I said, Brian, look at this mess. Moses had 45 children. I'm not looking them up. I'm telling you that now. And he said, oh, okay. And we started going, and then he turns around and finds the obituary note, which is rare, because Moses died in 1884. So you didn't find that for African Americans. Moses died at 115 years old. Wow. And when he died, 43 of his children were still living. That threw me off, because as far as I knew, my Moses was 1791. And I'm on the phone with him, and I'm like, Brian, this don't sound right. He was, what do you mean? I said, well, if he was 115, you subtract that from 1884, that's 1769. That's, that's 30 years away from 1791. He was like, don't you found his father. I said, yeah, I am not <laughs> doing this research. You are not going to, I'm not doing it. You're 
you're talking about American Revolution now. You're talking about no right. crime and not doing. He said, oh, okay. And then he called me the next day and said, okay, so this is the path that we're going to take. And I'm looking at the phone like, <laughs> really? <laughs> I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. We're really going to do this. And we have started doing it. And that's when you start digging into things like probate records and wills. And you start thinking outside of the box. And you start looking at deeds. And I mean any kind of land deeds. I'm talking about if, let's say, your mom left you some land. Well, when she left land back then, she also left everything that was attached to that land. Mm -hmm. So you're going to get any those that were enslaved by them or what have you. So you're going to look at all of those different types of records. And do not shy away from newspapers. Because newspapers, you don't even know. Like I said, I have accidentally found him. But it was also in the newspapers that I found the story of John Hill, a.k.a. Fear Mom. 